The Flash. Now, not only is this movie has a rocky development history being delayed since 2014, countless times getting like a million different directors. Not only that, but the original vision for this universe being Zack Snyder's was kicked out the door once BVS came out. Then we got over to Walter Hermada who took over the DC Universe, who's the head of Warner Brothers. And then he got kicked out and now James Gunn is over it. So The Flash has finally been released because this movie coincides with what the DCEU is going to be going forward. And yeah, not only that, but we have Ezra Miller, the main star of this movie, Barry Allen himself, getting into one of the most strangest scandals that I've ever heard of in my life, where he did so many heinous, where they did so many things hein things. So, yeah, um, safe to say the development in this movie was insane, and it's weird that it's finally out. Let's talk about the plot of the Flash. So, this movie loosely adapts the Flashpoint paradox. If you don't know what the comic is, it was where Barry went back in time to save his mom, and in doing so caused a different reality. Here, he does so, going back in time to save his mom, and, but going back, he gets thrown into this alternate reality where he runs into his younger self. Shenanigans in the of those two. Um, and yeah, it's all about a race to get back to the future, but also trying to stop this incoming invasion that's happening to this Earth to preserve it, while also trying to get this Barry back to his future. So, this movie's very complicated. Um, let's talk about this, some things I really like about this movie. So, spoilers, of course. There's always spoilers in my reviews. So yeah, let's start off with the beginning of this movie. So the movie starts out, and we meet Wonder Woman in this, who is played by Gal Gadot again, Ben Affleck's Batman, and Barry Allen. And Barry, the movie starts out with Barry trying to race the clock to get to this mission that he has to do before he has to go to work, while also trying to win on a sandwich. And it's just really fun. The opening running scene of this movie is so good, where he has to run from Central City to Gotham. It is amazing. But I'm gonna to refer to Ezra Miller as he in this review because in the movie he goes by he so I'm not gonna refer to the when I refer to the actor I'll go by they when I refer to Barry I'll go by he so yeah pronouns fixed anywho so we get to this scene and it's really well done not only do we have some great Batman and Flash action we have some really good sequences there's a sequence where to save a bunch of babies and that's really fun including a dog it was just cool I really like the slow motion of it it felt like Quicksilver scene from Days of Future Past, but kind of enhanced a little bit. So from there, we go to meeting Batman, and he's doing his Ben Affleck Batman thing. It's just really, really fun. All culminating in this scene where Wonder Woman shows up, Batman gets roped into the Lasso of Truth, which is just great. And then we go to Barry figuring out that he can go back in time because he's feeling inconsequential to the Justice League, but also he really wants to prove his dad's innocence because it's looking like it's not going to happen. So... He figures he can go back in time. He tells Bruce, Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, just gives this amazing speech to Barry. It was just great where Barry's like, oh, um, you you know, what losing your parents made you who you are. And Ben Affleck is like, no, well, it made me alone. So yeah, it's, and then he's just, whenever Barry's like, oh, can we get lunch? He's like, yeah, maybe next, maybe another time. It's just cool. It was great to see Ben Affleck's Batman finally again, and the swat the suit <laughs> looks so good in this movie. I thought he was really good here. Speaking of costumes, Flash's costume. I hated when I first saw it when the movie's trailers first came out. I thought it looked awful. The more the more the movie goes on, it just looks better as it keeps moving. It's such a good suit once you get to real once you get away from the cow. The cow looks awful. Everything else I think looks really good about the suit and. Ezra Miller themselves as Barry Allen the Flash is so good here. When he goes back in time and meets his younger self, there's so many moments where he see him just wanting to punch that younger version of himself. Not only that's something that I would do if I went back in time, but also because that Flash from those other movies was just so annoying. He wasn't really Barry Allen. And here, yeah, the present day Flash acts more like Barry Allen, but also he learns a lesson about, hey, shutting up every once in a while, and he realized that about his younger self, but he also realizes that his younger self ain't so bad either. He just needs more direction, and I really like that a lot. The dynamic between those two 
was between both berries was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. The back and forth, they had about Back to the Future about the movie. When they talk about different consequences and different Batmans and all these different things, it was just so cool and it was just so enjoyable and I just really liked it a lot. And to his credit in this Barry Allen in this movie, the younger version, isn't really as annoying as he was and I'm gonna get hate for saying this, but in both Justice League movies. Here, he's much more tolerable. He makes fun of your jokes. There's not any jokes about him falling on top of Wonder Woman, so that's something. Um, he does flirt with Wonder Woman at least, but that was in the beginning of the movie. But yeah, so from here, we have to meet Batman, because they want to save Superman so he can get Superman to fight Zod, because Zod's invading Earth. So, we meet a Batman, and this Earth is Michael Keane's Batman. And he has a beard, he's really worn out, and he's really funny. That was a great sequence whenever he's fighting the two berries, and only one of them has powers because the one got their powers taken away. So, they're sent, so they have a talk, and it's really good. And then they event Batman eventually agrees to become Batman once more because he's been retired, he has a beard and long hair. And it's a really great scene where in the trailers he goes, Yeah, I'm Batman. I'm, I thought it was kind of corny. Here, when he does it, it just works so much better um so yeah from there we go to get supergirl and well superman they think it's superman that's like supergirl they save her anyway and it was this really good scene where they batman's doing his thing moving way more than he did in the other movies in the first two batman movies from 1989 and batman returns i think he can i don't think he can still turn his head though which is weird so yeah from there supergirl joins that she runs away when she comes back because she doesn't like humans but from at that point Barry gets his powers back and Supergirl brings his powers back to him we go to the final fight of this we're gonna fight off Zod's army which is weird to say with a Flash movie that we have to fight off Zod's army but anyway we go from there and he fights we all fight Zod and Batman dies twice <laughs> it's really weird Michael King's Batman dies twice in this movie once he uh, his ejection button isn't working so on his bad plane type deal so he pushes it into the force field and ends up blowing up and then Supergirl dies with being stabbed by Zod Barry wants to go back in time both Barry's do at first but then the second Barry the younger Barry just gets way too carried away with it because he just wants to save Kara so bad Supergirl because they ended up having a little bit of a connection and he ends up becoming a pro pretty early version of Dark Flash, but then the real Dark Flash shows up, which showed him the beginning of the movie, which drew Barry into the timeline that he was currently in the alternate timeline. So they all, there's this big sequence where we have Dark Flash, Young Barry, and our Barry that's talking, and we see what the consequences are for them doing this. Worlds get destroyed, and we get cameos from Christopher Reeve, Superman, and the Supergirl from that universe. Um, we get Nicolas Cage as Superman finding a giant spider, which if you don't know what that is, that's from the canceled Nicolas Cage Superman movie, which is supposed to have been directed by Tim Burton, and it's really good. I thought that was a good sequence. That's probably my favorite cameo. We get one of Jay Garrick. We get one, you know, Golden Age Flash. We get one of the Golden Age Superman. We get one of Adam West's Batman. And, yeah, the cameos are very good. I like the Cage Superman one, because that was really cool to see in motion and actually happen on the big screen because I've always been intrigued by that movie and I love Tim Burton but the rest of them they just kind of feel a little bit disrespectful because I mean they're not it's not Princess Leia or Tarkin level bad like in Rogue One there they were they talked Tarkin dropped, was dropped the whole movie in Rogue One that was terrible here they don't talk and they just look at this little portal in the sky which again you can be like oh that's even worse because it doesn't serve a story purpose, it's just for an easter egg. I don't think it's as bad as the Tarkin stuff from Rogue One. I thought that was way more disrespectful. And the Leia stuff from Rogue One, and even the Leia stuff from Rise of Skywalker. Here, it's bad, and it's really distasteful, but it's not nearly as bad as some other, some other stuff. Um, but anyway, so, we move on from that scene. We realize the young Barry has to die to stop this Dark Flash, he was a more expanded version of Barry, he was really corrupt because he keeps trying to go back in time to just stop this whole deal. So Barry goes and he dies, young Barry does, sacrificing himself for our Barry. We then go into the past 
Flash realizes, Barry realizes that he has to have his mother die, and it's a really emotional scene, just like in the show and the comics and everything Flash related, where he's looking at her and he gets the thing of tomatoes, puts it on the, and he takes it, and it's just, it's really emotional. It's really, there's a lot of emotion in this movie of Barry and his parents because it's a very emotional concept. The Flash is a very tragic character. And I was really worried with this one that they wouldn't really go into that much, but they really do. They do go into it. And Ezra Miller gives one of their best performances I've ever seen from them in this movie, where they're actually giving what I want from Barry Allen as a character, where Barry Allen, he jokes, but he's not like all sporadic. He's not Shazam from the recent Shazam movies. He's not Spider-Man. Barry Allen is a very complicated character, and Ezra Miller gives a really good performance here as Barry. It's really good. There's a great scene between him and Iris in the movie. There's great moments between him and his dad. There's a, like I said, in this moment with him and his mom. Yeah, Barry's great here, and he has a great character arc. So from here, we go to the ending of the film, where Barry adjusts the camera, I believe, to show that his dad's face was being shown, so his dad can come out of jail. He does proves his innocence and he goes out to the outside the courtroom and Bruce Wayne pulls up he thinks it's Ben Affleck it's actually George Clooney with a white beard <laughs> um and I think this got a different reaction than what Warner Brothers was thinking it would get because my audience laughed <laughs> they laughed very hard in this scene I don't blame them because this is a very it was just the way it was done it was very funny like Barry goes oh who the fuck is this like it's a very funny reveal so i don't know what they really wanted with that but i don't know if george clooney's gonna actually be the new batman of this new dc universe i know brave and the bold is coming out possibly being directed by andy musetti who directed this movie probably mispronounced that name but we also have the batman part two coming out so i don't know if george clooney's the new batman that's fine i like to see him get redeemed if he's not if this is just more of a joke that's fine too i don't care just made good movies, guys, because I actually really like The Flash. I thought this was a really good movie. This is probably one of my favorite DC movies in recent memory. Because, I mean, yeah, it's not as good as The Batman. It's not as good as The Suicide Squad. But it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this movie. I like the music, not just the pop songs they played, but the orchestral themes was really good. I know there's a channel who, follow, who I follow and who follows me. Um, orchestral Eclipse, I believe. I probably butchered your name. It's just not because I'm looking at it. I'll put it on the screen now. But I can just see him just taking this score and elevating it. So, yeah. And this score is already great. But I can see him just doing something cool. And I can't wait to see that. That was a little plug. I don't know why. But anyway. So, The Flash. Good movie. Really enjoyed it. The cameos were weird. The movie has some pacing issues. It could have been shorter. There's some scenes with Barry and young Barry. I think could have been cut out. But overall... I really liked the movie. I really had a good time with it. It was fun. It was fast paced. It was enjoyable. I just wish it would have been more focused on the Flash. Even though it was a Flash movie, it was less Batman focused than I thought it was going to be. But I really wish we would have got something between Reverse Flash here. But that's just me being a Nick Picky fan of these movies. So all in all, I'm going to give the Flash an A.